Welcome to our show today. You know, the issue of drug abuse and addiction is a it's a very serious one. This is just hold on a minute, please. Let me just bring you in. Are you in? No, oh, oh my god, I guess it's there. All right, let me add you. Hold on one minute, so oh great. So you are are you in hey. Oh great. Wow. Like I hear you. Oh, you see, this so is better now. I'm not going to be looking for myself. <laughs> oh, good, 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 great. Welcome. So let me just quickly um welcome everybody in so that... Uh, let me move can, the light uh, properly so I can do the yeah, light. Just the a light, second. Yeah. yeah, you can set the light, here. Yeah. So the issue of drug abuse oh. and addiction is a serious one. This is because the, the, this is because the link between mental health and drug or substance intake, you know, they are, if you if you, either you are abusing drug or you are an addict, or just to know, just to let you know, it will affect the way you think because when you take all those drugs, they affect your brain, and they affect the way you think. So, because tonight, just to educate us further, to take us further to the next level, to show us the way out, we have a sister, a doctor, a psychiatrist, <laughs> over twenty years in the UK practicing experience she's a very close friend to this brand and go talk on tv so she's been here before she's going to take us for that tonight so good evening dr tony magbeaviola i'm killing your name again tonight I, i'm not killing it in fact it's okay so it's okay it's okay it's okay, I am it's so okay. But anyway, it's okay. Um, once you are ready, yeah, you, I think you are setting up your light. Once you're ready, just um, you you can take over from there. So, um, from my mouth, yes, I'm, I'm ready. I'm using the word. I don't want to use the word Aussies. I don't like the word. Let's hear from the Aussies' mouth because everyone that I, the people I, that is not a horse. On this show, they are not a horse. So that a horse doesn't that, talk. <laughs> and us. Yeah, us talk but the people that understand us language, we we hear the us. So and you know, you, my guests are not us. So I don't like using the one. Let's hear from the us's mouth. You know, some people say, <laughs> you are so much. Uh, yeah, no. So let's hear from Doctor Magbeola's mouth. Tony as a sister. So welcome. Yes. Good evening again. Please let's hear from. Let's just introduce yourself for those who who for one time they've not seen you or they've not heard from you. They don't even know you. Please take some few minutes just to introduce yourself to them. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this wonderful channel, Ago Talk TV, with my darling sister Helen. My name is Toye Magbag Biola. Yes, I am a medical doctor. I'm a psychiatrist. At the moment, I'm actually working with adults with learning disability, but I have experience in general adult addiction, eating disorders, old age. So I've been around, so yes, it's a pleasure to be here to enlighten, educate, and prevent what is preventable for a good quality of life. Well, thank you so much. So let's dive in. What is drug abuse? Mm -hmm. I think when people think about drug abuse, the first thing is that they think about hardcore drugs, but any drug can be abused either illegal drugs, prescribed medication, can be abused. Even the common coffee, it is a drug. And I'm sure most people don't believe that caffeine is probably the worst addiction that there is worldwide. So when you're taking something used for not what is not supposed to be used for, is what they call a drug abuse. Mm. So what is a so, drug addic uh, addiction? Addiction, uh -huh. you know, you know, sometimes when you drink tea, you like it with sugar. Yeah, Ooh. before one sugar was okay for you. Ooh. Then after what happens, you need to be adding more sugar, adding more sugar, adding more sugar. And then in the end, your life is rotating around sugar and you can't even remember the tea or anything else. So basically, when you're addicted to something, it takes control of your life you lose control of what you normally do. So somebody will see and think, oh, this person used to be this way. But what has happened is because whatever drug that they're using has now taken ultimate control of their mind. So they're driven by the drug instead of them being in control. So that's the difference Ooh. from drug so, abuse uh, and drug, drug addiction. Drug abuse, drug addiction. 
So when you made comment of it, uh, you said coffee, coffee. So coffee is a drug. <laughs> oh, is it a coffee? Coffee is a drug, believe it or not. <laughs> Everybody so likes coffee. And why do we take coffee? Okay. Yes. So, why do we take coffee? Some people take coffee because they love the taste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people take top coffee to make them alert. For my people back home, I'm a Nigerian. When you're reading and it's exam time, you live on coffee and you put your leg in cold water. Yeah? So, so the sleep. coffee was also, was originally meant for pleasure to drink and calm down, but it's now being used as a form to keep people awake. So depending on how much of the caffeine in your coffee is what will alert you even more. But people now say, how can I be addicted to coffee? The common thing, I can talk about the UK, a lot of people drink coffee at work or tea. Mm. Every time they're going for tea break. And then when they go and leave, they're not drinking as much, as, much, as, as much coffee. And then they start to feel very tired. They start to feel very lethargic. They're wondering, oh, am I coming up with a fever or a flu or something? It's actually withdrawals. The caffeine level has dropped to a level where your body is now craving for the coffee. But mentally, you're not thinking it's coffee because you, can't, you don't think you're addicted to coffee. But the moment you now go and take that cup of coffee, you now find out that the jittering, the tiredness, and the agitation reduces. At that point in time, that is when the warning sign is you are addicted to caffeine. Wow. So, uh, 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 abuse and addiction, are they the same thing? Because No, abuse is using something for the wrong reason. Using something that is for something, but you're using it for something else to get a certain effect. But addiction is when that thing that you're now using, which you used to abuse, now takes ultimate control and it becomes an addiction where you cannot stop it. Usually you cannot stop on your own. You probably you need support in order for you to stop it. Great. So, so what, are, what, what are the types of drugs that uh, we call, that we, you can be really, when you say, you know, sometimes we say hardcore drugs. Now we just hard you know, we found out that coffee is one of them, tea is part of it when you take it as a but. We have the ones that, by law, some of the countries the ones, are not allowed, classifies one. Yes, you have the cocaine, you have the heroin, you have the marijuana, and then the marijuana have different strengths. There's the adulterated marijuana, there's the pure marijuana, but most of them are usually mixed. So sometimes, if you're not savvy or in the business, you probably don't know what you're smoking. So sometimes when they offer you certain things and they call it something, it might be something else. So the common ones, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, and a mixture of all other things. They have like amphetamines, the ecstasies, and the different other drugs. And most of them are stimulant drugs. They're drugs that people take to stimulate themselves, usually with people who may have issues but had needed something to kind of take them out of it. Some use it, they take it's medicinal to help whatever symptoms they're going through. But some people also get into it by accident. Okay. So, Ooh. yeah. So all those drugs can be addictive. But initially, it starts as abuse. And then Ooh. when they're not in control, it then takes over them. And then they become addicts and always crave for it. And different drugs have different ways in reaching its addiction level. Wow. So the symptoms, the what are some of the symptoms? For example, what are the symptoms in your line of work? What are the symptoms that we look at, we look at for to know whether this person is uh, abusing drug or is it just addiction? Because some like now nah, coffee, some of us take like four, five coffees a day. We are addicted to it. <laughs> but do we call it abusing it? Are we abusing it or do not have recommended cups of coffee that we need to take in a day so that we won't be abusing it? No, I mean, it's individual. Some people have different levels of in which they move from abuse to addiction. So when, when it gets to a stage of addiction, it's a case where you cannot do without it. But if you're still abusing, you might maybe drink four today, and then tomorrow you only take two, and then Ooh. next three days you take one, and another day you take four. So it's not there's not that consistency in the amount that you need to take to achieve whatever you want to achieve from the drugs. 
So when you get to a stage where you think that if I don't drink coffee, I can't sleep, or if I don't do this, it affects something else, then you know mm, I need to start to slow down because I don't want this drug to be the one that keeps me awake forever. Mm. So that is when you now put yourself back and say, I think I'm doing too much of this and I need to reduce the amount. So people's body chemistry is different. So I can't say five is the ideal or four is the ideal. So every individual will get to know their body as they take these drugs. Mm. So when we talk about uh, uh, the art, the art core drugs or they classify the high ones, the ones that actually they classify as being um, hardcore and everything, rates. including yeah. alcohol. Alcohol yeah, is also alcohol. a drug. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is still, is still there. So, <laughs> so now, oh my God. So now when you get, all the, what, what are the consequences, for example, what are the consequences that, what are the consequences when you take, when you are addicted to this, on your addiction, drug addiction? There are a lot of consequences. Some people might take the same drugs and absolutely nothing happens to them. Mm. But some people will take a little bit and they end up with psychiatric symptoms. Usually psychosis, hearing voices, seeing things, changing behavior, changing personality. You know, they start being unkempt, don't look after themselves. And that applies to most things by the time you get to that point of addiction. But usually before then, they're usually people who, you kind of suspect there's something not right, but you can't actually pinpoint what it is. Mm -hmm. But then when you have that conversation or you walk past them, you can probably smell something that is, something that you think, mm, this smell is not a normal kind of smell. You know, some people can actually pick up smells and some can't smell anything. So even if you tell them that this is what it's smelling, they don't know. But mm -hmm. things like personality changes, the demeanor, the way they respond, and you're thinking, oh, this person is a bit different from how they normally are. Mm. So alarm bells should start to ring that. Mm. If they don't have a natural mental illness, naturally, then are they taking drugs to overcome something that they're going through, but they don't, have to, they don't want to have that conversation? Mm -hmm. So they then fall into drugs, or they, by accident, some people go to parties. If they don't look at their drinks or they leave their drinks, then their drink could be spiked. And that's another way that some people will end up. But usually it's personality changes, characteristic. That's what you normally see. Wow. Wow. Because I've heard some people that when they're going through pain, especially there was one I had that was really strange to me, is cigarette. This person smokes because when he doesn't smoke, he gets very upset. He gets easily any small thing, she just, it just flips. It gets really, it get angry. So, but when he smokes, mm -hmm. even, no matter what happened, it's calm, it's relaxed. So I now ask myself, is there anything in the nicotine, anything in that thing that is calming him? Or why is it, whenever he takes it, it's fine. But whenever he doesn't take it for a certain hours, he can easily flip like that. So, and he said, oh yeah, I, I, that is what I, I work. So please, I don't know, does it, there's any connection in that? Is there anything in nicotine that helps? I think it's also a form of addiction. Why you use something to do something else? So psychologically, the act of actually just even putting the smoke, the cigarette in your mouth, distracts you from what the problem is. Wow. So there's a little bit of distraction in that act of actually smoking. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the nicotine. It might just be that act of distraction but also nicotine has its own receptors in the brain as well that does certain things. But how much is it that tips people over and how much is it that actually gives the people the perception that they're actually feeling calm? Because when they're sleeping, they're not taking it. So they're calm when they're sleeping. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the nicotine that's actually doing the work, although there's some aspect of it that does. But sometimes it's just that act of distraction. So you, that's why you find out sometimes that even people who smoke, when they stop smoking, you find that when they are now transitioning from not smoking to nicotine patch, some people will still want to use something with a pipe just for that motion action. Mm. Of, and it's a kind of a distraction mm. for them. Mm. Wow. So is recovering from drug addiction possible? How and how? It is possible. But it takes inner will, 
inner power and faith and belief in oneself. And that's why when it comes to issues of addiction, they always say the individual has to want to stop the drug. You cannot do it on anybody's behalf. You can't say, oh, my relative, my brother is an addict. I really want him to help him. I want him to go for treatment. When, if he's not ready, it's going to be very, very difficult and it can be very frustrating for the people around them. So the first responsibility is the individual. And usually sometimes they have to get to complete rock bottom, which is quite sad and painful for families. Mm. Before they now think, you know what, I think I've crashed to the bottom. I really need to do something about it. And that is the time where they can now decide to go into treatment. And there are various ways in which they can actually go for treatment. Wow. Whoa. Oh, okay. Before we come back, come on. Serious come on. matter. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, that's why you touched coffee. You like you touched me because coffee is my own. So <laughs> coffee is as we have touched everything, but don't touch coffee. You would have, um, you know, I would have had this because before even this four o'clock, I take the last coffee for the night for the day at four p.m. and I take very strong coffee. When I mean strong coffee, it's Italian espresso coffee. That's espresso, mm. not espresso. The short ones. I take two shots. Yeah, the short ones. The short ones and it's really powerful. It's good. I'll enjoy the taste. I enjoy the smell. And I'll enjoy the way it makes me feel. You know, so and I've been taking coffee for years. I can't take any other coffee more than those coffees. If I take any other one, they look like what they taste like water. They don't taste like coffee. So and I've done I don't and I don't want to give I don't want to promote them. So I would have called the name. I buy the top top Italian coffee. That's what I take. And I cook it in the net Italian pot. The, na- the report, the native way. <laughs> so, you've so, long as it doesn't, so, long as, so long as it doesn't affect your quality of life, that is the most important. Obviously, I just Because it addiction like is I'm when it affects... <laughs> if I took it for o'clock, I'm talking now, so, and I'm okay, I don't look high, so that means I'm okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> You know, oh my God, can, can we win every time? No, we might do, I'd like to draw balance. We can't win all the time, but you know, we are all, we're all entitled to um, some mm-hmm. some form of pleasure. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's just that to just make sure that the pleasure does not take control of you. That's the most important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And knowing when to slow down, pull mm-hmm. back, and the other and thing is that yourself. it browns your teeth, so you are it browns exactly. Teeth. So you can you imagine you take it, you enjoy it. I wish I can wear like well, a gloves on my teeth before I take it so that they won't go white. I can whiten them now because they are brown. <laughs> That's it. All right, my people, you're all welcome. So please, if you are watching us or you are going to watch the replay, because I believe some of our followers watch replay, you know, or you are there, you are just there, please type in something. If you have any question for Dr. Tony, please type on the comment section so that she can respond you may not have asked my the question i know how to ask you might have some serious oh my minor question that is not in the list we just ask her and she's willing to answer if you can't type on the on the uh comment box you can actually call the phone number is plus four four seven four four eight four zero two one zero five so you can call in maybe if you save it on your whatsapp it will be easier for you save it on the whatsapp so it's cheaper and um, you just use the same data and you're using that to call us. So it's plus four four seven four four eight four zero two one zero five. So if you can't type in, just call in. Otherwise, type in your question under the comment box and um, she will be ready to answer all. So we'll just keep talking for a few minutes just to give them somebody's chance. Maybe the, the person will be thinking about it. Do I ask this? What kind of question I want to ask? Or maybe this is too embarrassing. Or I don't need to call now. Let me just type it. Whatever it is. Or you're watching the replay. Even if you can't ask now, ask later. I will find a way to send a question to her. And I believe she's coming back again. When she comes back again, we we'll deal with these questions. Or why we'll just come and say, let's just deal with question and answer today for all this same a topic we've treated today so thank you so much all right so any final word any things that I didn't ask that you you know is in the line of your business your work 
is a line of your profession. You know what? Henry, you didn't ask me this part. This part is really important and it will touch life. It will change and help people. Please just flow and let, uh, let them get this value from you. I think my, my message, especially for parents oh. of teenagers, like I always say, communication with your children is very, very important. You need to know your children. You need to know their friends. Because I know some people will say, oh, this such and such a person is this person's friend mm -hmm. and everything. But sometimes your children will not communicate with you when they know they can get away with it. So parents need to be on top of the ball that children know about drugs. They probably even know more than you, the mother. Mm -hmm. They can tell you what to do, where to get it, how to get it, and how much it costs. You'll be very surprised. You'll be thinking, oh, I don't want to talk to my child about it. They already know, especially the children in the UK. And I'm sure it's the same thing in Nigeria. They know where to go. There was an interesting thing that somebody told me that, you know, sometimes you see boys by the chip shop trying to buy some chips and then you have some older guys hanging around offering them sweets. Mm. So when they start to offer them sweets and then they'll say, well, I'll buy you your chips. Yeah, because that's all they eat. Mm. And then they buy it the first time, they buy it the second time, the third time mm. they say, oh, okay, you know what? Can you do me a favor? Mm. And this is how they start to push these young children. So you need to be very aware. Tell your mm. children not to take anything from strangers and not to help anybody to carry anything. Because what they do then, you now take it and on your way to deliver where they tell you to deliver, they will send another of their gang to come along and steal the thing from you. Mm. So they'll steal the thing from you and then you'll go back to the person and say, somebody stole it and then he's gonna be very angry. And what do they do? And that's when they start to imbibe you into starting taking drugs. And then you end up being doing drug runs because you now owe them because they've been buying you chips and you haven't been mm. paying for it. So, so it's that's very, right. very, so very- It's a way of kind of recruiting them. Recruiting. So it's very, very important. Talk to your children. Talk to them about drugs. Talk to them about the effects, how it can affect them. It might end up their education, their career. The young girls might end up into drugs and they get pregnant as a teenager and things. Like that. And they kind of technically ruin their lives. So mm. parents need to be very aware. Single mothers, single fathers, all apply. It's not an excuse that because I don't have two parents, therefore there's no excuse. Just be responsible educate them, talk about it. Let it be a table, dining table conversation mm -hmm. where you sit down on the dining table and you talk about it. Because once your children know you're aware and you're savvy, they're more inclined to open up to you and then you're more inclined to help them if they do need help. So that's my message. And for the older ones who never got stopped when they were young, they have partners, they have girlfriends, they have wives and they're hiding and they're taking drugs try to keep up with the Joneses, trying to keep up with work because there are some work environments where cocaine is the order of the day. So people need to be aware, you know, children who go to private schools, you know, people who work in the city is a known thing, it's a known fact. So I'm not making this up. So you just need to be very mindful and very aware, know what is going on and help people who need help and work with them. Once they're at that stage where they do need help, work with them so they can realize themselves to go out and get help for themselves. It's so important. People do recover from addiction, but it takes hard work. Like I said, it takes digging, digging, digging deep into yourself. It's almost on a spiritual level. That's why some people say they don't want to do AA because AA, they're talking about God, but they acknowledge that alcohol is something that is almost, it's called a spirit and it's not called a spirit for no reason. You know, some people call alcohol spirits. Yes, mm. it does take control. So, yeah, it's very important. Be there, be aware, and help people around you who need that support. And don't mm. leave them. Because sometimes it's easy for you to want to give up. But don't give up on them. Just keep on working with them. And with God on your side, and them being determined, things can get better. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Toye. But there's the one question that just came on WhatsApp. The person didn't want to call. He just sent a message. It's a question. It's, it's saying that mm -hmm. uh, marijuana, say, is it true that 100% marijuana has some healing properties? Because lately in the U.S., 
So lately in the US, some part of US said marijuana is allowed there because they said it's medicinal. So as a doctor, tell us. Mar mm. Yeah, marijuana is medicinal. Pure marijuana is medicinal. But the problem is that there's a lot of adulterated, a lot of people use it for pain, especially if you're in the Caribbean. It's something that is just part of their way of life. They use it to cook, they drink it in their drink, but it's pure marijuana and it has some medicinal properties. Yes, it does. But unfortunately, when people discovered they could do more, people started adulterating marijuana and that's when the side effects, the psychosis and all those things now becomes a problem. But yes, marijuana is even being investigated. They actually, we have places around the UK as well where you can actually buy your marijuana syrup, your marijuana this. That's because they know it has a medicinal property. But to differentiate between people who are abusing it and people for using it for medicinal purposes is currently the difficulty. Hmm. The person said they say he believes that the reason why they're having the one, the mixed adulterated ones. It said is uh, it says that is is big. It thinks because it's not free to not everyone is not free to buy them in U in UK. That's why um, they have this fake people mixing it up to make more money. Yeah, most of most things that are illegal are usually um, financially driven. So they want to make more money from giving you more quality of what there is available. And it applies to all things. So it's always been. So it's nothing new. It's just human nature. If you want more money, you adulterate and then you do that. Even if they make it legal, you still have people who will still continue to produce adulterated ones. It's just human nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, this person would have just called instead of continue to type this. So let's. Um, <laughs> I'm not even going to type. I think he's watching and he's typing. <laughs> he's, he's typing on WhatsApp that he doesn't want to put it on the platform. So anyway, that's fine. I, mm, I just, I just believe that if they, if somehow, 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 from what this woman is saying, if they can make it uh, uh, um, available for everyone and control it the way they are doing part of US now. Put it so people can people once they can people can buy them and they can actually have the just the way we take paracetamol medication. You have a particular amount. You take two tablets or one tablet every four hours, so they can control better. So I think that will stop a lot of all this. Uh, but the question is, what are they taking it from? Because if it's for medicinal purposes, you yes. probably go through the GP and be prescribed by specialist. But if you just want it for wanting sick, then that's a different kettle of fish. Recreational ones, just to get high and They will not partake, exactly, <laughs> just because want to be high. What you no. need for sleeping? Some use it, even some, they actually use it for treatment of epilepsy. People yeah, who really yeah, have yeah, yeah, tractable epilepsy. Yeah. So they do use it for people who have severe epilepsy. So yes, there are some medicinal purposes, but until so they're the, able to have regulate... Arthritis, arthritis and he pays yeah. on joints and pain. Even some disease. people use it for sickle cell. People who have sickle cell pain, you know. Okay. But I think what they want to do is try and find out as much medicinal property of it, so that even if it's going to be allowed, it's going to initially be by prescription. So you have a diagnosis, and then they give you a treatment. But they're not going to just do a blanket free for all because they no. know even without it being there, people will abuse anyway. anyway. But in order to protect people, yeah then okay. so yeah there is benefits of, so in the uh, uk in the uk now because if you're just wondering what this woman is typing yes still typing in the uk yeah are, are they can if anybody is in this category that really need it can they go through their gp or do they go through a particular doctor to get that they go through the specialist so depending on the diagnosis of the individual they go mm -hmm. through their specialist and they would have tried other things before they get to that point Sorry. so it's okay. not the first point of contact Okay, okay. So, my sister, I hope you have uh, you are watching and you have heard. So, um, I think um, if you have any other thing you want to add, please, Dr. Tony, add and we round up now in 50 seconds. No, I think that's it. The important thing is stay safe, only put something that is necessary for your body and is useful for your body. Great, thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for thank you, thank you, thank you. I believe everyone they replay, people will play it and they will leave comments, they will write more questions and we'll try and get them to you. And also, if I don't believe you can actually go on to this platform under this video and actually type on those questions as well and respond to them because you are part of um, us and you're a friend to this um this brand yes. so you can always go there and just type on those questions because some of them will ask the question there you can answer them and they will know it's from you because your, name, your profile will show no problem so that was at all so great thank you so much thank you for coming so yeah this is where we draw the thank brand. you very we'll much the cutting tonight and i uh, hope to see you guys again on friday for another Obonga gist god bless you thank you dr toye <laughs> see you thank again. you very much bye-bye god bless god bless bye-bye Bye. Bye. So thank you everyone. Bye. Take care. God bless. Thank you, Mike Trim. Thank you for the rest. I'll come and watch later. God bless. Bye. Bye.